video is sponsored by Masso, makers of the Masso CNC controller. Great hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'm going to be making a base for this. What is it I hear you ask? Well, it's actually a small touch light. Simply touch it, it turns on. Touch it again, it turns off. It can go in multiple levels as well. If you hold your finger on it, it'll go duller. And it remembers the last setting it was on. The problem with it is that it's very light. It doesn't sit on the bedside table very well. And I want something to hold it in place. Now to this end, I've designed this here. A nice wooden base that this will fit into. And hopefully... I'll get it right, and if I do, it should look a lot like this. And what's more, it should fit very nicely into it. Now this is the Ideals Beginners Project. Drawing it couldn't be simpler. It basically consists of nothing more than three circles. The first one is the inner circle here where this metal disc is sitting. Now this little metal plate came with the light, it's double sided foam tape on the back, it's about one and uh, three quarters of a millimetre thick, it's 30 millimetres in diameter, and I just cut the hole a little bit bigger at 31 millimetres, just for that extra clearance. The next diameter is the diameter of the base here. Now I measured that using a pair of digital calipers and that came out at 79 and a quarter millimetres. Don't know how many inches that is, but it'll be a bit over three. For added safety I added an extra half millimetre to that diameter to make sure it would fit properly. The last circle is the outer diameter of my ring here. I worked out that I'd like about 7 millimetres thickness on the edge here to make sure the wood didn't break easily. And I also decided I'd like to put a chamfer on it as well at the same time. And that I used a little trick for a 90 degree V-bit, which I'll show you shortly. So let's get this drawing drawn to start with. I'm going to start by drawing my three circles. I'm going to bring up the circle tool. I'm going to enter a diameter of 31 millimeters and an X and Y position of 0, 0. And I'm going to go create. Now 31 millimeters is the diameter of the hole here I want for this little metal disc. I'm now going to create a second one and this is going to be 79 0.75 millimeters in diameter and that is the diameter of the base here. I'm making it half a millimeter bigger than the actual base. Now the third one is going to be the outside diameter of my wooden piece here and I said I was going to make it seven millimeters bigger so I need to add 7 to 79.75, sorry, I need to add 14 to 79.75 because of course it's 7 millimeters either side. Now I can either do that with a calculator or I can come in here and just in the box here I can do an arithmetic function. So I can go uh, plus 14 equals and it works it out for me at 93.75. So I'll just go create and I'll just close that. There's my three circles. That's the whole drawing done. Now all I have to do is add the tool paths. I'm going to start out with the V-cutting tool path and I'm going to be using a 90 degree V-bit. Now the advantage of using a 90 degree V-bit is as a simple rule. Whatever depth you plunge it in to the material it will cut a groove twice as wide. So if I cut it, plunge it in two millimeters deep, it'll cut a four millimeter groove. 
two millimeters on one side of the center and two millimeters on the other. This is really handy. So if I put the V cutter and run it on the line, it'll cut two millimeter chamfer into the material this way, which is what I want. And the other two millimeters when I run the profile cut will be got rid of. If you're using different cutters, uh, different angled cutters, you get different results. But the 90 degree V bit, v -bit is really easy to remember. So I'm going to select the outside line, I'm going to cut, plunge in two millimeters deep and I'm just going to cut on the line for this one here. We'll calculate that. And we'll preview it. So far so good. So next, I want to machine this pocket here that takes the body of my light. So I'm creating a toolpath called pocket for lamp. I'm going to cut it 13 millimeters deep because that's the deep I want to go and I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to do a raster cut I'm going to do it as a conventional cut and I'll do a profile pass after it's completed the raster cut. So let's just calculate that. Now with that done we need to do the pocket here for the magnet. But we've already cut away all this material inside the pocket so we don't need to start from the top and work our way down. I've created another toolpath called Pocket for the Magnet and I'm just going to select my 31 millimeter circle here. I'm going to cut it to 1.75 millimeters deep but you'll see here I've entered a start depth of 13 millimeters it's because I've already cut 13 millimeters down into the material. All I want to do is go another 1.75 millimeters beyond that. Again, I'm going to use a raster cut, conventional cutting, and my profile pass I'll do uh, last. So let's calculate that, and we'll preview it. You can see I've coloured that one grey to make it match the metal piece that's going to go in there. Now the final cut is going to be the profile pass. That's going to cut out my wooden piece here. For this one I'm going to use my quarter inch end mill. I'm going to cut 18 millimeters deep. I'll be cutting on the outside of the line this time. That'll leave my two millimeter chamfer inside. I'm also going to use a ramped tool path. That means I'm going to cut the start the cutter here and move down on a slight angle for the first 10 millimeters and then start cutting around. That's instead of just plunging straight down and start cutting, because when you do that, you end up getting marks just on the side of your material here. You find a small scallop occasionally comes out of your material here where it plunges down all the time. That's if you've got any movement in your axis, if it's not absolutely rigid. So by using a ramped toolpath, you can slowly move it down a little bit at a time and then do your run round then down a little bit and around again. So I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter ramp which will, uh, I'm going to use a smooth 10 millimeter ramp. You can see here how it curves down and then it runs around the tool path here. And the distance here shows how far it will ramp down before it starts running normally around the tool path. I'm also going to add holding tabs. I can edit my holding tabs here. Oops, I must select a vector. There. I can edit my t holding tabs there. And I'm just going to add a constant number of them, just four, which will add in four tabs around my piece. I close that. And I can specify how big my tabs are. So they're going to have a length of eight millimeters long 
and they'll be two millimeters thick. That should give plenty of holding to the material. We'll just calculate that. And now we'll run the preview. As you can see, it's leaving half of my chamfer there. And there's the holding tabs at the bottom. Well, that's what I want to cut. Let's take it out to the workshop and give it a try. And there we have it, the completed project, and it's come up really good. One of the great things is it looks pretty much like the one on the screen behind me. And that's one of the things I like about Vectric software, is you can see what the project's going to look like even before you go out to the workshop and touch a piece of wood. Now, if anyone wants to make this particular project, I'll put a link on my website to where I purchased this lamp. Just follow the link in the description box below. You'll be taken off to the write-up associated with this video and find all the information you need from there. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. You know, this really is the ideal beginner's project.